Hi everyone, I'm glad to report that the wind has eased down a bit in the garden, thank goodness. And it's meant that I've been able to spend a bit of time outside and um, getting some more big jobs done, like moving some more mulch. I've been working on the edging and I've filled up some more containers. I'll show you them a bit later on. But in the veggie patch, um, those bulbs I put in a few weeks ago are starting to pop through the soil, which I'm so happy about. I've got a camellia tree that um, for the last few days has been absolutely covered in flowers and bees as well. And my bird of paradise plant is in flower also. Um, I've got a big new addition to the garden, which I think you're going to be happy about. And um, I also, at the end of the video, I go through my tomato list. I'm going to be growing 40 plus tomato varieties this year. Well, hopefully they work out for me. And I'll go through that list and I will be sowing three of my favourite varieties. Where I do is go through it step by step on how I sow my seeds. And please bear in mind, which I do mention later on in the video, I am just a home gardener. But I wanted to share with you how I do it and I do have success that way. So, um, I'm sure I've missed out on a few things. There's quite a lot going on in this video. So let's get straight into it now. You can see there, there's still lots of lavender on the plants. And now the rosemary's in flower. And it's looking really lovely. And this week I've been working on my edging. You might notice there, it looks a bit neater than it did before. I have love doing curves in garden beds, having big sweepy curves like this. So for most of this I just used a shovel and cut out the edges but when I do add in new sections and this goes for most new garden beds in my area I just plan ahead like for example here I've got cardboard underneath that went straight on top of the grass with some compost on top and I probably won't plant that out now for a few months I'll wait until the grass clears Come around here, I've made a start in mulching under the orange tree. I have a lot more to do there. It's going to be a bit tricky with all the nasturtiums. Still got lots of oranges. Still absolutely packed. I was thinking as well that I'll probably need to thin out some of those um, poppies that you see down here. I don't want to. I feel so guilty pulling out plants. I know it's really strange or thinning out plants with my seedlings. I have some oranges there I need to pick up. The sun hasn't risen yet so the lighting's a bit better than last week. But there was something down here I wanted to show you that I'm so excited about. I've just given you a quick glimpse there. But let's go down to the back and I'll show you the new addition to the garden. Wow, the lemon tree is packed as well. Covered in lemons. And we'll go underneath this archway. I hope those runner beans, the scarlet runner beans that I cut back, grow again. It's kind of leaning over a bit. The wind has really knocked things about, but thankfully it's eased down a bit now. I'm really delighted I put all those calendulas in, in spring, or not in spring, in autumn. Okay, let's swing around and I'll show you what's here. I've got a new greenhouse. Woohoo! It's not my dream greenhouse. It's one that I bought online that was on special. It is smaller than the other one that I had before, but I'm delighted I have a greenhouse because it just opens all the possibilities of what you can grow and getting things in early. We'll have a quick look inside but later on at the end of the video I'm going to sow my first few tomato plants here and I'll pop those seeds in and I'll show you how I do it but I really like the way it's got the clear cover. I was never really mad on the green cover and I think the clear one looks much nicer. Good old reliable calendula and the sweet delicium is self seeding and popping up. I need to fill in this gap here. For some reason that plant didn't grow very well. 
but I do have a few spare ones I might pop in just to bush it up a bit okay so over we go so the last greenhouse that I had came out to about here so it is significantly smaller although I did also order one of those four shelved smaller units that could go up against the house so I have a plan I'm going to use that small four shelved unit to put my seeds that I'm trying to germinate then I'm going to move things on into here when I pop them into other cells so individual cells so you remember I had all my Asian greens well I started to transfer them into these little cells and they've actually grown quite a lot already the choice um hood soy toy oh my goodness here look I'll zoom up and show you the name of it sorry there you go some of them as well they are coming on nicely I'm delighted with them and then come around this way so here's some sweet Alice and down there I've got these um, little purple bok choys yes there are quite a lot there's like 50 of them but I'm going to use these all around the garden they grow so fast and they make a really nice attractive plant as well with their beautiful purple foliage you can see there's not a great amount of room in here but I will be able to work with this for sure I might make some more shelves on the bottom section and I added this other little um, shelving unit from another old greenhouse so I'll figure it out and by the time I've got my tomato seedlings ready these will be ready all to come out of the greenhouse so it's just a bit of a juggling act really isn't it that's what it's like in spring and because I have all this extra space here I'm going to fill that up with I was thinking zinnias have you got any other suggestions I just want it to be a really nice pop of color there not sure yet um, I took those that table and chairs out of the shed that I had in storage. I don't know why I didn't have it out here. Um, I still haven't cleared out, cleared up the stuff I took out of the greenhouse. Whoops! But I have been busy doing other things. Okay, so there's my um, strawberry patch, and here I've got loads of snapdragons, sweet peas, calendula. I have to fix up the rest of this. It's still looking pretty messy. But I have some of those um, poppies that started to germinate. Let me see if I can show you. See down there? They're germinating. Woohoo! Okay, let's go around here. We'll go over to the raised garden bed area. Hoses everywhere. I hand water my garden. I don't have drip irrigation, but that's on my list someday to get the whole garden irrigated. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, like I watered the other my garden the other day and it took me three hours hand watering but I made sure it was a really nice deep soak just to help all these new plants okay so let's go around my rusty old post box look how full it is in here we've got the kale and the mustard greens and then you've still got the um the pineapple sage I'm glad I didn't put cut that back actually there's something else I'm really glad I didn't cut back remember a few weeks ago I showed you this this was a sage that I put in here and I was concerned that the frost would get it I never got around to cutting it back and look at this I am delighted oh excuse that pile over there I do have a lot of piles around the garden that I need to sort out but look at this Look at this lovely salvia. And do you remember all those little um, bulbs that I put in along the edges of the garden beds? These were bulbs, spring bulbs, like crocuses and bluebells. They're starting to pop up now. How good is that? Sign for spring, isn't it? It's very exciting. I do need to mulch here. Look at that, that's mint. That was from my <laughs> days of just putting mint straight in the ground. And it just goes everywhere now. It's pretty handy actually, because I can pull it up and give it away to people. Makes a nice gift. 
It literally goes everywhere. It's all in here too. You can see it there. Oh, there's a barge that I haven't planted up properly. I'll have to put that in the ground. My cabbages are doing well and the kale. And my peas. These are the golden potted peas. I think that's what they are. Oh, whoa, I really need to come out here and stake all of them up. And around here. This has come back to life. Do you remember it was like half eaten? Looked dead. It's great. More nasturtiums. I'm so excited about growing lots more nasturtiums this year. The cabbage. Good old reliable Johnny Jump Violas. So last night I worked on something that I had in my mind for a long time but never got around to it. When we moved into the house we had a lot of old broken fly screen frames and this is one here and I used some old coat hangers which always seem to have so many and in the past I did buy these cheaper plastic ones but now you know they break they just snap apart. And you always see so many of them being thrown out and put into op shops and thrift stores. So I made this. It's a type of trellis or it could also be wall art in the garden. It's a bit tricky to see. I'll see maybe if I can put it down flat. But I just attached it with the same um, stuff that I use to tie up my tomatoes. And... I arranged it flat on the ground first, tied it up. It still needs a bit more tying, but that's gonna look so good, I reckon, in a garden bed. I just popped it in here, but can you imagine when peas or some climbing plant is wrapped around it, the green against the black, it will just really pop. This archway here hasn't done too well with all the wind. I'll have to fix it up. It's kind of leaning over a bit and I've got all the Pandoria growing up around it and all these peas go around here. I haven't actually had to cover many plants because it's been all right at night time. This is something here that I do cover up. This is a staghorn that I got off. Oh look at all of them. I'll have to save them. They're little succulents. I can use them to make new plants. This is a staghorn that I got off my husband's grandma, one of the many plants I received. And last year I thought I nearly killed it with the frost, it went so brown. But it's come back and this is the one I want to make sure that I do not kill. It's very precious. Okay, still a lot of work to do here in this section. Love that old gate. I do have another one of these gates that's behind the shed. I have to take it out. I want to use it into the entrance into the chicken run. And look at this. All my carrots I put in here. Along with a few other things. There are the carrots there. They're germinating. These are um, a rainbow mix like the heirloom carrots. I might have been a bit heavy handed there with the sewing. And I've got a few other things popping up. They look like nigellas, which are lovely. And then you've got all the ranunculus down here. Come around this way. There's some more, or some milk thistle. Oh, I can't wait for spring. I just cannot wait. I do love all the green and I feel so fortunate to live somewhere that I can have this much green in um, winter. But I am excited for the colour. Look at this, the sun's about to rise. Another lovely day, clear blue skies. Couldn't ask for anything better. A few little things to show you around the front. And guess what I've been doing? Working on more containers. <laughs> These are the ones I showed you a few months ago that were being thrown out. And I actually bought some seedlings. 
So here's some poppy seeds in there, some primulas. I did buy some sweet Alice only because there was a big tray on sale for four dollars and there was probably about 12 of them in there i was going to use this as the container that i was going to put in over the fire pit because it's got the handle and it can hang it off but i did get something else that i might use that's a bit better it's an old teapot so here's anyway here's one of the cases and i put i transplanted some um, forget-me-nots in the suitcase I don't know it just reminds me of you know Ireland and hopefully I won't be forgotten <laughs> and then over here these are Diantus they're like a crimson color so not long and the hot colors here will look nice against the old rusty containers and I did another basket as well with some stock they're all stuck in there. Oh wow, look at the sun shining on the gum tree. Just makes it look yellowy orange. It's beautiful. That's why I love coming out early morning time. You can see so much. And something else around here. My petal path's kind of gone a bit. The petals have browned off. Look at this though. How good's that gonna be for mulch? And as I said, I just throw it back under the tree and let the cycle start all over again. Oh, look at this privet. They are just, oh, I didn't even get it all. I'll have to go and root that later on. Oh, there it is. Let me grab it out now because these things are shocking. And they grow so fast here. They're a weed. And they just take over areas. Okay, so I want to show you around here. So as one camellia fades, another one opens. Isn't that just gorgeous? And you know, I did record some footage from a couple of days ago. I grabbed my camera because I wanted to show you something really cool. There were, oh, I was gonna say thousands, I don't wanna exaggerate, but there were hundreds and hundreds of bees covering this. And let me pop in the little clip now to show you. It's absolutely covered in bees. So they're actually buzzing all around me as well. So I won't stay here for too long. But I wanted to pop this in to show you. It's such a glorious sight. I hope you enjoy that little clip. The other thing that happens, this happened last year as well. The petals fall off very quickly. I don't know why that happens really. Do you think the plant could be, the tree could be under a bit of stress maybe? But it sure does look gorgeous all over the ground. It almost looks like confetti from a wedding. I almost forgot to show you this. I've got this bird of paradise plant by the side gate. And I've got a flare on it. Isn't it spectacular? I have this in my garden because it's one of my mother's favourite plants. My mum and dad used to live in Australia in the 70s, but they moved back to Ireland. And I remember my mother would have these in her house, the artificial ones. And I thought, how good would it be? If I could someday grow this beautiful looking plant, it almost looks surreal. Last year, I had to cover it every night with the frost and it did go a bit brown and there were no flowers, but look at it this year. It's really grown so much, so lovely. I'm delighted to have a flower. Back outside the greenhouse and I'm going to use this little table as a potting table and before I get started I just want to be clear that I am a home gardener I'm certainly no expert and don't have any professional training so I'm going to show you how I sow seeds and it's what I do in my garden and it does work for me so I'll just share it with you so here's a list of all the tomatoes that I'm going to try and grow this year um, I haven't put them in any particular sections, they're just all mixed up together 
and I will put a um, type out a list to go in the description below if I come back a bit there you can have a fuller view and um, so it's got a real mix of cherries and um, beef steaks um, and little currant tomatoes different types some of which I have grown before and then others I've never tried um, now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to sow three different types of tomatoes and they are going to be the ones that are my favourite and I'll tell you why. The first one I'm going to sow are these money makers and I'm always going to sow these because these are the ones that my granddad used to grow when I was a little girl. He'd have a greenhouse absolutely full of them and I remember walking in to the intoxicating smell and seeing all those lovely red tomatoes so I definitely want to grow them. The second one these are probably my favourite. They suit our family. These ones are called Tommy Toe. They grow really well. Um, I love the way, see on that picture there, they do go like that, they gradually ripen. So you have the green to the orange to the red. And my kids come out here and just pick them off. They're good, just like a um, snacking size. Um, so I'm growing them. And then last but not least, is this so this is a bush variety or indeterminate so it just grows a certain size and I grew these for the first time last year and oh my goodness the amount of tomatoes I got was incredible and they were really delicious so I'm gonna grow them as well so I do my list is I've got 40 tomatoes but with these three here I am gonna grow some extra ones so as, sorry I have to clarify that with the list of 40 I'll probably only be growing one or two of them probably just one but with these ones I'll grow multiple plants so I just want to show you a few different ways that you can grow them and um, if you don't have a greenhouse you can use lots of different things as a little mini greenhouse so this here that's just a container that they sell um, berries in like strawberries and blueberries and it's already got the holes at the bottom and I've used them before and they're really good these will probably I'll probably use these for my chilies and capsicums that need a bit more heat and I will still put them in the greenhouse but these are excellent for tomatoes and um, also I have this I mean we get takeaway and takeaway sometimes is in these plastic containers so you can use them as a little greenhouse you can either, you can just put the lid on top and you can put some holes in the bottom or you can just flip it around, put a little pot, a low pot in here and then use that as the lid. And then also, what else? I have these. If you're ever going to someone's house or I try not buy these, but they sell a lot of cakes in these plastic containers. That's the cake base. Um, and these make really good little greenhouses as well the lid fits on nicely and you can put some pots in there so if you're ever at a friend's house and you see they have these or anywhere really don't be embarrassed just ask can you take it home save them up and they're perfect as little incubators and then this is one that I bought it's already starting to crack but this is probably what I'm going to use today and I'll put my pots in there and the cover on top so let me get started. I have this tray. I reuse these. Um, you can also, a lot of garden centers have like um, um, an area where you can recycle pots. So um, you can pick up some of these or little pots. That's where I get a lot of mine from. Um, okay, so I have the seed raising mix and I like to moisten it first. I put them in the cells here. So I'm gonna fill all of these up. So I lightly just push down the soil, just very lightly. I'm going to make my labels next and put them up there. So I pop the labels in there and you can use lots of different things for labels. You can use old yogurt containers. These are um, cut up pieces from a, a butter container. You can get lollipop sticks um, like this, but get um, a permanent marker <laughs> right on there. Um, just keep an eye on your labels. The permanent markers should be fine, but um, in the past when I've used the lollipop sticks, they do fade. Okay, so next I'm gonna sow some um, seeds. I'll do two in each cell. So I'll push down a little indent in each of these and I'll pop one of each seed in here. Okay, 
so those seeds oh, there's one there that I dropped in the wrong place just take that out and there's another one see I told you I was an amateur <laughs> okay um, so the other thing I had to do was I had to swap around these two labels because <laughs> I put the seeds in the wrong place but it's fine <laughs> it's all gonna work out fine now I said I put two seeds in each cell some of them have three because you know, I mean they're a bit fiddly but when you do put the seeds in try and spread them out a bit because eventually when they do germinate and grow you're going to want to thin them out to just one per cell to get a stronger plant um, okay so you can either just get I'll get some of that um, seed raising mix and cover it with a light sprinkle that's usually what I do and give it a light tap down and um, so I'll do that now with the rest of them so the next thing you do is you transfer this tray into this base here but I need to wash that out first and um, I haven't cleaned it out and you don't want to risk any infections or disease going into your little seedlings so you need to try and make sure that everything's nice and clean and this certainly isn't so I will give that a wash then I'm going to fill it up with water and I'll put this tray on top so I popped it in the greenhouse um, another thing you can use if you don't have covers like this you can get some cling wrap and put it over the top now I don't let tomato seedlings soak in this little bambury of water for too long I'll leave it for maybe a couple of hours to make sure the soil the pot, seed raising mix is nice and moist and then I will pour and drain out that water and I'll just use a spray ball and the reason why I do that is because I feel like I've got more control over my seedlings and if you're relying on this water basin you're not really I mean I don't feel like you come and check as often but if you're using your spray ball you have to come and check on them twice a day and um, it gives you an idea of what's going on with them um, I have the vents closed at the moment, but once they start to germinate, I will open them up. If you do have any questions, please um, put them in the comments below. And I will be coming back to these tomatoes, and hopefully next week I'll have some more seed sown to show you. Okay, let's go back out here. You can see the sun's starting to shine now. It's going to be a lovely day. The kids will be back probably around lunchtime. So do you know where I'm gonna head now? I'm gonna head down to the garden center and see what they've got. See what I can put in the ground in preparation for spring. So thank you so much for watching everyone and until next time, happy gardening.